Hey, everybody. Welcome to Day 53 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. I'm so glad to be with you again today. Today, we have a very exciting passage of Scripture, and I call this, I'll Stand With You, Lord. Around um, the year 1962, January 27, astronaut John Glenn was ready to be uh, launched into orbit in his Mercury Atlas rocket. He has a wife named Annie. He and Annie were childhood friends. They literally played in play pens together because their families were friends. John was Mr. Everything, a three-sport varsity athlete and popular around town. Annie was bright and kind and very talented musically, but she had a terrible stuttering problem. She has what you call an 85% uh, disability with stuttering, which means that eight and a half out of every 10 words that she spoke were either lost altogether or corrupted by stuttering. She was so humiliated as a little child, she tried to speak once in class in elementary school and everybody laughed at her, so the teachers never made her speak again um, publicly. And uh, when she grew up, she couldn't really talk on the telephone. She couldn't carry on a normal telephone conversation with friends. If she went into a department store, uh, people thought she was mentally ill or disabled and they wouldn't help her. And sometimes they ridiculed her and they were impatient with her. If her children ever had to have medical attention, she couldn't even call the doctor. She had to ask one of the neighbors to call the doctor for her. And she had oftentimes been completely humiliated in life, and so she didn't want to try. And John Glenn loved her. So married they were, happily married. On this day, January 27, 1962, as John Glenn was ready to be launched into space, uh, the weather was bad, and he had to come down off the uh, control tower pad. And um, as he was coming down, his associates at NASA said, you have to hurry up and call Annie right away on the phone. And so he hurried up and he, he did call her. He said, Annie, what's wrong? And she explained that the vice president of the United States had pulled up to their house in his limousine and had thought it would be a good idea just to pop in on Annie and interview her on national television with the cameras rolling. And she wouldn't let the vice president of the United States into the house. And he was upset. Uh, word came to John Glenn as he was calling that uh, there had been uh, word from the top, and by top we mean the very top of our country, saying that Annie had to let the president in for an interview on national TV. So John called Annie, he got the scoop from her, and here's what he said. He said, Annie, if you don't want the vice president or the TV networks or anybody else to come into the house, then that's it as far as I'm concerned. They're not coming in, and I'll back you up 100%. And so that's the way it turned out. Um, Annie turned aside the vice president of the United States. But it would have been, been emotionally impossible, right, for her to do this. And it's so great that John stood up for his wife. Sometimes in life, you have to stand up for your Savior. And we're going to read a story about that today in the book of Numbers, uh, chapters 25 and 26, and I'll be reading in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary. You can follow along in another version if you prefer, but here's Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. And Israel abode in Shedim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself to Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord, before the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said to the judges of Israel, Slay every one his men who were joined to Baal Peor. 
and see one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was halted from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel while he was passionate for my sake among them so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore say, See, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite who was slain, even who was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman who was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zer. He was head over a people and over a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Afflict the Midianites and strike them, for they afflict you with their deceptions, with which they have deceived you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, who was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Chapter 26. And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spoke to Moses and to Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar, the priest, spoke with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, who went forth out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanak, of whom comes the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites, and they that were numbered of them were 43,730. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel and Dathan and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram who were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah did not die. The sons of Simeon, after their families, of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the family of the Jamanites, of Jakin, the family of the Jakinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, 22,200. The children of Gad, after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shunai, the family of the Shunites, of Oznai, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arad, the family of the Eridites, of Arali, the family of the Arelites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those who were numbered of them, 40,500. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, after their families, were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Pharez, the family of the Pharzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Pharez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamul, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those who were numbered of them, 76,500. Of the sons of Issachar, after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolaites, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jeshub, the family of the Jeshubites, of Zimran, the family of the Shimranites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those who were numbered of them, 64,300. 
of the sons of Zebulon after their families, of Sered, the family of the Sardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jaliel, the family of the Jaliites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, 60,500. The sons of Joseph, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Maker, the family of Makerites, and Maker birthed Gilead. Of Gilead came the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Helek, the family of the Helekites, and of Asriel, the family of the Asrielites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites, and of Hefer, the family of the Heferites. And Zelophead, the son of Hefer, had no sons, but daughters. And the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mela and Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terza. These are the families of Manasseh and those who were numbered of them, 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families. Uh, the families of uh, Shuthila, the family of the Shuthilites, of Beaker, the family of the Bekrites, of Tehan, the family of the Tehanites, and these are the sons of Shuthila, of Iran, the family of the Iranites, and these are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those who are numbered with them, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph, after their families. The sons of Benjamin, after their families, of Bela, the family of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites, of Jufam, the family of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites, and the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they were numbered 45,600. These are the sons of Dan after their families, of Shuem, the family of the Shuemites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuemites, according to those that were numbered of them, 64,400. Of the children of Asher after their families, of Jimnah, the family of the Jimnites, of Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites, of Beriah, the family of the Berites, of the sons of Beriah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Machiel, the family of the Machielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those who were numbered of them, 53,400. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, the, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shelem, the family of the Shelemites, these are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were 45,400. These were numbered of the children of Israel, 601,730. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many you shall give the more inheritance, and to few you shall give the less inheritance, to every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot, according to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are those who were numbered of the Levites after their families. Of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Merari, the family of the Merarites, these are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites, and Kohath birthed Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bore to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram Aaron and Moses and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those who were numbered of them were 23,000, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. 
These are those who are numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them except Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. And so ends Numbers chapter 26. Well, chapter 25 is a very dramatic chapter of Scripture, isn't it? Basically, what happens in chapter 25 is that Balaam's plan to curse Israel is successfully executed after all. So remember, when he tried to curse them on three different occasions in the previous chapters, it didn't work. So Balaam's idea that he presented to Balak of Moab, and he is in league with the Midianites, his idea is to cause the Israelites to sin by committing idolatry and fornication with the pagan prostitutes of Midian. And because of their sin, now there is a plague that is, uh, that is introduced to the Israelite camp. And so in a sense, they have been cursed. And now 24,000 of them are going to die in the plague. And so Balaam's plan in the previous chapters is now executed after all here in chapter 25. Um, apparently in the beginning, the Israelites were visiting the tents of the Midianites to perform pagan sex worship rituals. And remember, in paganism, it's ever the way sex is worship in paganism. So it's that way to this very day. All right, so um, then you have the leaders in chapter 25, verse 4, the leaders of the Israelite congregation. The leaders are all arrested and hung in broad daylight for everybody to see. And they're hung because they failed to lead righteously. In fact, they accelerated the flame and caused the problem. So the leaders are hung in broad daylight as an example for everybody to see and to learn from. In chapter 25, verses 6 through 9, is this crazy story about a, a leader of Israel named Zimri, and he's from the tribe of Simeon, and he actually brings a pagan Midianite prostitute into the tabernacle tent. Unbelievable. So we think that most of this pagan prostitution was being done outside the camp in Midianite land. But this time, this crazy leader from Simeon actually brings a pagan prostitute into the tabernacle tent to perform pagan worship sex rituals. And everybody is outside crying. They see him do this and nobody does anything. But Phineas, who is the grandson of Aaron, sees what is happening, and he leaps into action, grabs a javelin, and because this man and woman are together as they are, he grabs his javelin, runs into the tabernacle, and stabs both of them through at the same time and kills them both in the tabernacle tent. Unbelievable. Now, one more thing to notice before we leave this idea of what Phineas did. Uh, it's interesting that all of these sins are being committed with the Midianites. And the Midianites are Moses' in-laws. You know, Zipporah, uh, Jethro, these were from the land of Midian. They were Midianites. And so all of this is, sin is going on with Moses' you know, family in law. And that's just the irony of what's going on here. But Phineas is our hero and we so appreciate him and we want to follow his example, right? Uh, one other thing to notice in chapter 26 with the census. And this is so great because we have a new census and it's just like, you know, in the beginning of the book of Numbers, we had a census and here's another one. And this new census is only 1,820 men different from the census from 38 years ago in Numbers chapter 1. Now, what's so great about this is that they've been in the desert all of this time and they have not seen a population decline. As a matter of fact, we just saw the deaths of 24,000 people killed in that plague, right? With the Midianite uh, temple prostitutes. And so we just saw all 
all of this this death, 24,000, and still we're only down less than 2,000. If it hadn't been for the 24,000, we would have had more people than we started with in uh, the numbers one census. So this is so great. It just shows the protection and the provision of God in the worst of circumstances, you know, in, in the wilderness. And still the Lord led them all the way. And their population has not gone backwards in some sense, not at all, except for the plague that we just saw at uh, chapter 25, verses 6 through 13. Okay, so what's our big life lesson? Well, you know, of course, it's Phineas. Uh, sometimes in life, and it seems like this comes up especially in matters concerning religion and power and money and sexuality. Sometimes in life, when someone is being ganged up on or misled or led astray or ridiculed or molested or treated unfairly or worse, sometimes the Lord's call is for someone, anyone, to stand up for the cause of right, to, to stand up for what's pure and, and good and true. And we all have to be sometimes Phineas's. We just can't let bad things happen to people when they're all alone and outnumbered and they don't know what to do. This is, this is the Lord's work. And so sometimes we have to stand up and it might cost us something. Phineas didn't know how this was going to turn out, but he did what he had to do. And so I think that should be our prayer today that we will have a heart and voice and hands to stand up like John Glenn did with, with Annie because he loved her. You should raise your hand and say, I'll stand up for you, Lord, and, and stand up for the Lord. You have to be a Phineas in your generation. So how about if I pray out loud and you pray in your heart, and we're going to ask the Lord to make us brave, to be Phineas's and stand up for him where we need to. So let's pray together. Father God, we ask that you would indeed Give us the voice and the hands and especially the heart to stand up for you when all the world around you is disrespecting you, when, when people are being led astray, when people are being injured and bullied and ganged up on and, and falsely accused. I pray that we would have mercy on these people, that we would stand up for what's true and right and good. And we pray that we would do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. Thank you for joining us for day 53 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. And I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.